when I was in the sixth grade, at some point during the school year, I started to wear my bright red raincoat to school every day, all day long, inside class and outside class, rain or shine. And I wore this coat for days until my teacher finally asked me why I kept wearing it all the time. And I was so ashamed by my answer because we really weren't supposed to talk about this kind of thing at home. But I screwed up my courage and I whispered to her, I wear my raincoat every day because I don't have any bosoms. Eventually the whole bosom thing worked out. (laughs) Yay. But... (laughs) But growing up, I didn't really have anybody to talk to about my changing body, or in my case, my not changing body, because mama and her generation of Southern women were raised that it was not polite to talk about female bodily issues. It wasn't ladylike. In fact, it was actually kind of shameful. Sometimes they couldn't even say the words. They'd say things like, darling, We were so glad that Nancy had her period because we were so afraid that she was going to be pregnant. All I know is if it wasn't for those movies and Girl Scouts, I would have never known what was happening with my body. And I'm pretty sure the only reason why we saw those movies is because our troop leader was from Wisconsin. So in addition to not being able to talk about female bodily functions, there was all sorts of criteria for acting like a lady. And some of them made sense, but some were kind of restrictive. So for instance, you could be pretty, but you couldn't be sexy. And it wasn't appropriate to flaunt your body or whatever else you might be doing with it. So when I got married at my wedding reception, about 10 minutes after I got there, mama starts rushing me to cut the cake and dance the first dance. And she's pushing me to wrap things up and she's driving me nuts. So I go to my sister and I say, why is mama in such a hurry for me to leave? And my sister said, Trisha, Mom is afraid that if you're not in a hurry to go on your honeymoon, like every new bride should be, that all of her friends will know that you've done it. Which brings up another major criteria for acting like a lady, which is a lady makes sure that everyone feels comfortable. In my family, women come out of the womb knowing that their main priority is making sure that everyone feels comfortable. We are in permanent hostess mode. And not just physically comfortable. This is emotionally comfortable too. Um, A lady never says anything to upset someone. So even if that means repressing something you may think or feel, you know, you just, uh, just, a lady just doesn't cause trouble. Now, I didn't have a particularly good honeymoon, which foreshadowed a not particularly good marriage. Uh, And so I got divorced. And um, to jumpstart my life, I thought I would move over to Ireland for a while. And after about a year in Ireland, I am the happiest I have ever been. Uh, I'm leading life on my own terms. I'm writing and painting, having left behind a corporate career. I'm dating a man who is seven years younger younger than I am, with a ponytail. <laughs> yeah. And I'm rapidly running out of money. Uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't have a work permit, so I can't get a real job. So I'm looking for these cash under the table positions, right? And so I see this poster for an artist model, and I think this is perfect. You know, the money's good, the class is nearby, and I've been to art school, actually the School of Museum of Fine Arts here in Boston. You know, I've been to art school. I've, I've drawn from the model loads of times. I know exactly what you need to do to be an artist model, and one of the things you have to do is model nude, which in some circles could be viewed as, you know, 
uh, showing off your body. Uh, but I know since I went to art school that actually artist models are uh, not viewed in a judgmental or sexual way, where a series of lines and shapes, tones and shadows, uh, artists draw from the model to hone their craft, like musicians practicing scales. And in my experience, uh, there's sort of a sacred contract between artists and models. Models help artists become better artists, and, and so they're respected. Now, I know this intellectually as I go into my first modeling gig, and I'm wearing this long, dark green silk robe that I bought at Neiman Marcus a couple years ago, back when my life looked very different and included money. And <laughs> when the time comes, I, I step up onto the riser and I drop my robe and I'm standing there completely nude. And on the outside, the students see me as a very confident model, gracefully moving in between poses of varying lengths. And in the inside, in my brain, these old tapes are playing about ladylike behavior. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what am I doing, what am I doing? And I'm standing here buck naked in front of total strangers. But no one's judging me, they're just drawing, and I'm actually pretty good at this, and so this becomes a permanent gig. And over time, I get really comfortable with my body and what I'm doing with it. And then Mama comes to town. <laughs> and one night, I say to her, you know, Mama, I have to go to work. And she goes, well, where do you work? Now, Mama has been a real trooper as she has watched my life careen off the path <laughs> that she thought I would lead. And I'm afraid that if I tell her that I am modeling nude, this might just be the thing that pushes her over the edge. But, you know, as I think about not telling her, but I thought, you know, I, I'm an adult. I need to be able to have this conversation with her. Let's sort of change this dynamic. And so I say, you know, well, Mama, I'm a nude model. And there's this long pause as the reality sinks in, and she says, honey, do you do it for the money? <laughs> like I'm a prostitute or something. And I say, yes, <laughs> I do this for the money. But I explained to her that I'm just sort of a series of lines and shapes, and she relaxes a bit, but I can tell she's really glad I'm doing this in Ireland so none of her friends can find out. Back in the States, it's my 15th college reunion at Vanderbilt University. And I, I go back to Nashville, and a lot of my friends are there, including a bunch of my sorority sisters. We used to uh, dress in pink and green and drink wine spritzers. And they're all raising children, and they want to know what I'm doing. And I'm a little bit hesitant to tell them, because I'm not entirely sure how they'll react. But, you know, I told Mama I'm on a roll. So I say, uh, uh, well... Uh, I'm a nude model. And one of my friends says, Trisha, I am more interesting because I know you. <laughs> and another friend of mine says, you not only dropped your clothes, you dropped your baggage. And they all look at me like I'm a rock star, like I found the cure for cancer. And I begin to feel really evolved. And I think, you know, I have got this. I have figured this all out. I've just broken this age old cycle of ladylike behavior. I can say the words period and pregnant out loud. I can stand nude in front of total strangers and feel comfortable. I don't have to be defined by the rules that someone else has set for me. I can lead my life, my life and it's going to be great. Back in Ireland, I've gotten such a good reputation for being a model that I'm now modeling for professional artists, not just students. And one of them recommends me for a gig with this British art director who's in town working on a film that Angelica Houston is directing. And he wants to do a birthday card for her, and he wants to work from the female figure, and I was recommended, and I am thrilled. I think my nude image is going to be in front of an Oscar winner. I mean, this is my break, and my, all my bravery for breaking rules is going to pay off in this amazing way. So I go to the art director's 
apartment and I knock on the door and he says, come on in. I go inside and I immediately know that something is off. For one thing, he's finishing up a bottle of wine in the middle of the afternoon. And for another thing, the TV set is blaring. I think, how can you draw from the model if you're getting drunk and watching TV at the same time? I mean, it doesn't feel very sacred or respectful. And I start to get this really unsettling vibe. And my gut is telling me, get out of there now. But then these really old tapes about ladylike behavior start playing in my head. And I think, well, I don't want to say something to him that's going to hurt his feelings. I mean, I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. And so I start to talk myself out of what my instincts are telling me to do. And I rationalize, well, maybe just drinking wine and watching TV is part of his creative process. So I take off my clothes and I step on the riser. And the pose he wants me to hold is one where I'm standing with my feet apart in a V and my hands are over my head in a V-shape as well, like I'm in a mid-jumping jack pose. I could not be more exposed or vulnerable. And while I'm standing there, I look over at his mantle and I see 10 at least not particularly good drawings of women holding that exact same pose. It's clear that he doesn't want to draw from the female figure. He just wants to look at naked ladies. I get really, really scared. And I begin to calculate how long it can take me to get to the door. And I start to look for other exits and plan my escape route, all while I'm holding this mid-jumping jack pose. And then he says, not me, he says, this isn't working. I get dressed as fast as I can and I'm headed for the door. And he says, do you wanna see your drawing? And I said, okay. And I look down at this not particularly good drawing and he says, I raised your breast so you would look better. And for a moment, I am that sixth grade girl ashamed in my raincoat. Then I'm offended. Then I'm outraged. And then I remember my fear and I just get the heck out of there. I never modeled again. And it's not because that guy scared me, although I was really lucky that he was just a creep and not a criminal. I never modeled again because I scared myself. I'd put myself in a potentially dangerous situation because I didn't want to hurt the feelings of some man I didn't even know. I mean, I was more concerned about making sure that he felt comfortable than whether I felt safe. And so while I've learned to stand nude in front of total strangers, it was time for me to stand up for myself, to redefine what acting like a lady meant for me, starting with saying what needs to be said, no matter who feels uncomfortable. Thank you.